everyone, my mechanic here. Um, today I'm going to be replacing the clutch and throttle bearing on this 1997 Mazda Miata MX-5. Um, I've already got jacked up and everything. And when you do jack it up, just give it, kind of give it a little wiggle. Make sure everything is, you know, secure. It's not going to fall on you. Just to be, you know, just a safety. So just give it a little, and that's nice. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. So just make sure you're safe under there. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is probably going to go on the inside and go ahead and start taking out the, uh, the console area here. We're going to take out this, we're going to take out, unscrew our shifter, um, take all this stuff here so we can lower our transmission. Alright, now I'm going to move those screws on each side of here. Go ahead and take those out. So on the driver's side. And one on the passenger side. Okay. Oops. Okay. And then there's going to be two inside here. Okay. I'll put the screws right here for right now. Be the same. Yep, they're the same. And I'll get a tray to put those in in a minute here. I think there's just four too. I'll look around and get a little more, but I think there's just four. Oh wait. Hmm. Huh. Oops. Okay, so the thing is these things, the um trunk release, I don't know if that just slides up and that slides through. Yep it does. Okay. So alright. Look, there's two more screws somewhere. Does that come out? It does. Ah, but there's two under here. One. Alright, there's so another one under here. Now you should be able to just pick it up. Alright, let's go ahead and take this screw no or screw this off. Alright. Now you should just be able to pick this thing up. Actually, pick it up like this. Just like that. We do have some wires under here. Okay. Um, Unplug that, leave it low. You know, I might not, I might just leave that plugged in. Well, maybe not. Alright, I'm gonna unplug that and I'll get back to you. Alright, so here's what I was talking about. I know I looked back in the video and I saw that you couldn't see what I was doing. Um, these here, there's like a little flap in the um, in your cubby thing. There's like a little, you can just kind of, it'll slide through it. So when you pick this up, you pull it up like this, and then slide it forward. And then you, you'll get, slide it forward free of those and you'll be okay. So there's two screws down in there, in your little open up cubby thing. And then... One here, and then one on each side here. 
So a total of um, five screws. So we, when you get this off, there's going to be some foam. Um, so this will be sitting on here like that. This will be under, actually this will be underneath it. Take all your foam out. Okay. Oh, also this this um, here. Remember your this, your shifter just unscrews your knob. But oh, I'll show you saw in the video the last video. Um, but that here you just yeah, see if I get the focus here. You just press in that tab and pull it apart. So now, only thing I saw, that's got a crack in it right there. I don't know if I should be worried. I don't know if I can see all the way through right there. That probably, I'm, hopefully that'll be okay. But anyway, um, so once you get all that foam stuff out and everything, there is, uh, there's like four screws here. Whoops, why does the camera keep doing that? Sorry. There's four screws, one, two back here, two up here. And I don't know if this wire, this might be, this probably just pops out. A lot of these things are just clips in there, so I'll get that out. But so I'm gonna go ahead, and also these are 10 millimeter. So all right, I got those bolts out. So it looks like this it will just slide out of your way. So that wire shouldn't be a problem. Um, and then back here, so you should be able to just pick up this here this plate. I got my little screwdriver. Let's get up under here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, let me set this down here. Okay. So now, you're exposed. As you can see, you can see all the way through right. Here is underneath. A little leak right there. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some liquid wrench because this exhaust right here has to come down. Yeah, let me see if I can get a video of that. We're gonna take it down. I'm not really sure how far I'm gonna take it down yet, but I know a section of it right here is gonna come down. So I'm gonna take some um, liquid wrench. And I'm gonna hit those bolts with it. That way it's gonna make it a lot easier because you know you want to you'll be doing. Without doing that, it's going to be really hard to get these off because they're, you know, obviously the exhaust is going to be rusted on there, so make things easier. Also, probably going to go ahead and hit those bail housing bolts. And, yeah, that should be good. So, I'm going to let that soak probably for a little while. And while that's soaking, I can go ahead and take off other things like, you know, oops, like stuff like this bolt and this bracket here that holds this on. Uh, we'll be taking all that off. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Also, this, oh, actually, go ahead and spray these two. This part of the, it's like a, um, tram, it holds the rear of the transmission up. It's kind of like part of the frame area. This goes all the way back here to the rear. Oh, whoops. There it is. <laughs> so there's two bolts. I think there's three. I think there's another one somewhere else. Or maybe not. Oh, no, there's two bolts up there and three. Yeah, two and three. So go ahead and spray these. These, I'm pretty sure these, yeah, these are three bolts. Sure got my light. These are through bolts. So I think there's on top. Yep. So go ahead and try to spray on top. Spray on the bottom. All through in here. Spray up in here. Make things, you know, a little easier. So alright, well I'm gonna go grab my liquid wrench. Oh, here's what I'm using. Liquid wrench. I'm not sure if I'm taking it down over here or over here, but I'm gonna spray every little spot just in case I do decide to, you know, if I do take it out over here, let's go over here too. Yeah. Get my eye. Okay. Spray it over here. Now this, this exhaust doesn't look that bad. I don't think it's gonna give me much trouble. I really don't. That's gonna be hard to get to. All right, I'm gonna spray back here first. All right, go ahead and spray the rest of these guys. Look at that. Look at that. Watch out, dip on yourself. You get up on there. Okay. Spray that. Whoa! Don't dip on me. Do the last 
spray it when if I spray it like this, I won't get sprayed. If I sit underneath it, I'll get dripped on. Uh, simple things. Ow. Oh, by the way, you probably should wear safety glasses when you're doing this. Yeah, I keep it out of your eyes. Don't follow my examples of not wearing safety glasses. Alright, as you see, I already got the drain plug out and it's going to drip now. This is a 24 millimeter. I got that drain plug put back in. You can see it there. Where'd it go? Am I losing my mind? Oh, duh. I ain't losing my mind. Right here. <laughs> okay. So I've already got those partially loosened. Or, they're just a few threads on there. Alright. So I've gone ahead. I got the drive shaft out. Um, and I was under here. Not, I, was, I kind of thought about it for a second. I thought, why don't I take all the exhaust out? And then I decided to take the catalytic converter out, and I did enough. I can get, I got the drive shaft out. What I did is I still, I left that hanger off, which I'll put back on so it's not hanging by that wire, which is most of its ways is hanging from the back one. But I took that off so I can go like that and move it so I can get that uh, drive shaft out. But I'm not gonna take the whole exhaust out. Change the plans here. <laughs> this means I don't, which means you don't have to use the O2 socket here. But you'll still need up there. Or not the socket, but the wrench or whatever you're going to use. But I'll still need it for up there. Um, also, by the way, I noticed I, I have been keep telling you what size the bolts are. Basically, all these bolts are either 17 or 14. The exhaust bolts are 14. The dry shaft. Where'd it go? <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay. Those are all 14s. Um, and then there was one oddball. It was kind of weird. Hold on. There was one oddball up here. But when I was taking out this this bracket from here to the other side, I went across here. Um, there was one 18 millimeter right here. I was kind of surprised. Like, okay, it's like a random 18 millimeter. So. <laughs> that was a little weird, but for the most part, uh, what am I getting hit? Okay, but for the most part, they're either um, 14 or 17. Also, the drive shaft will just slide out on this side. So you unbolt that side, you pull it down, and then just slide it out. So it's actually not that heavy. So, all right. Also, oh, one more thing. I want to remove these guys. So just get your you know, those pliers and get them in here. All right. All right, I'm back. So these wires here are the ones up there. Um, they're sitting right up in here. Um, I just unplugged those, but they look exa exactly alike, so I marked them. And you see some are going that way, some are going the other way. So, and then these are going to line up. Right, the other side is going to line up too. Oops. Getting little marks on there. So this should line up. That won't get mixed up. And then... This guy right here, go to this sensor over here, which has two plugins, and I also did exactly the same thing. Um, each one, as you see, has got a little mark on it. I don't know if you see or not. Whoops. This camera won't focus. Anyway, I put marks on them. I know you can't see it, but basically, take a magic marker and make. Like make lines this way for one, and then you know line those two up, and then lines this way. You can do that, or put one or one and two or whatever. Um, as you see, these are held in by these clips, which are bolted down. They have a really thin metal. You can just bend them out. They hold on the wires. So, so just take your finger, bend that clip out, and when you get it back in there, you can just bend it back in there. So all you gotta do is push that. That tab in and then push it down. I'll show you when I get it out. I'm trying to push it out. I'll show you what I mean. But hey, it's not gonna hurt it. It's gonna when you bend it back, it's gonna be exactly like it was before. And that's about the only thing you can do. Um, what else did I do? Uh, oh, I don't know if I think I had exhaust out yet. Uh, last time I took a video, I don't know. But if I didn't, there it is. I have it out now. Just three bolts. I soaked those. Remember, I remember in the beginning, I soaked everything with penetrating oil. Well, that's why it wasn't that hard to take it out. So make sure you do that. That'll 
make your taking everything apart a lot easier if you do that. That wasn't that hard to do. Um, and then, oh here, the well, at least it's called a slave cylinder, right? I'm pretty sure it's called a slave cylinder. Here, look at my light. Like I just see. There we go. I got you see in here. There's two 12s, 12 millimeter bolts holding these. You just take those out, and then this will just slide. See that? I don't even worry about that. Which I'm gonna let it sit right there until I can take it out. But that way, you don't have to worry about you know undoing the lines and have to worry about bleeding and all out and all that stuff. You just do that much easier. Um, which I'm sure is probably the proper way to do it anyway. But anyway, um, up there. I actually got those bolts from the top. Let's show you. See that bracket? Let's see if I can zoom in a second. Real quick, hold on. Let me zoom in and then put the light back up there. Hold on. Okay, see that bracket right there? That line going through it. Okay, there's a there's a um what is that? Twelve or ten? No, twelve. Twelve millimeter. Yeah, twelve. There's a pretty long twelve millimeter bolt holding that. Okay. You can see it. See that? See that bolt right there? Here, I'll show you. Yeah. There's a bolt there, and right above it, there's another 12, 12 millimeter. Above that, there's a 17. I got those out up top, but take the 12 out first. That way, you can get the 17 now because that line will be in the way. And I'll show you when I go up there. Um, and then, oh, also, oops, still zoomed in. Um, this bracket here, it holds the exhaust on. <laughs> here, where's the exhaust at? Uh, you see, two bolts there. I went and just took those out. And just left them out because I'm taking 10% out anyway. They're uh, pretty long. Now, one's longer than the other. The long one's on top, the short one's on the bottom. Remember that. Okay. Also, when you take these out, they might be different sizes. When you look, when you take them out, look at them and you compare them to each other and make sure if they're different sizes, you mark them or you all, or you take note or like like me, just have a video so you can go like look at the video and be like, oh, that one goes there, that one goes there, whatever. Unless you have a really good memory. Um. What else? Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and mention this one down here. See that ground right there? Let's go take that out. You wanna be like, while well, we're in the transmission, you realize, uh oh, I left the ground on there. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention before too. <laughs> um, you, it's a good idea to unplug the battery when you're doing this, because so, when you're doing electrical stuff, you wanna be unplugging the battery. You wanna be, you know. So go ahead and do that too. Um, but anyway. So make sure you, before you also, before you load the transmission, make sure you get all your wires, make sure nothing's in the way, you won't be smashing or pulling stuff, you know, you won't be damaging anything, so. Anyway, alright, let's go up top. Ugh, okay. Still, let me get my light. Hold on a second. Okay. Got my light. <laughs> There's a bolt. I didn't take it out yet, but I loosened it. Or broke it loose at least. I don't know if it will focus down in there. Hold on, let me get this light stand still. Okay. Right down between. You know what? Hold on a second. Let me get another light. This light. <laughs> Got stuff sticking to it, the magnet. Use that light. Alright, let me just move this out of the way because that's not doing good. It's blinding us. <laughs> okay, now. See? Down in there. Right there. There's a bolt. Right there. Okay, you can see it from, I think you can see it, from, yeah, you can see it from the bottom. It's your choice. If you want to try to get it from the bottom, you can, or you can go up here. What I did, I got a flex head ratchet with a, I think I used a long socket or did I use a short socket? I might have used a short socket, I don't know. But kind of, kind of sneak it up under, under here. I think I went. I'm pretty sure I went under this hoses here, and you can sneak it up in there, and break those loose. Now, remember I was talking about the the 12 and, and the 15 or 17 up here. Here's what I'm talking about. Remember I was showing you that bracket one was under there a few minutes ago. Uh, wait, which one's? Oh wait, that's the wrong thing. Oh, by the way, this uh. Here. Give me a light. Hold on. Hope you have patience. So, I need my light. Okay. Oops, so zoomed in. This here, the 10 millimeter holding this onto that stud. 
it's easier we take that out and you can kind of wiggle it around and get around it easier because when that's sitting still it's driving me nuts. it was driving me nuts so also be careful you'll cut your hand i cut my hand like all over from this here so that's sharp so be careful um but anyway so there's a bracket holding a cooler line see this hose right here follow that hose down see that bracket there now if you look in here right there see that hole ah, i'm shaking hold on let me see if i can hold this camera still you can see that shiny area where that goes through now there's a 12 millimeter right there so see that 17 right there right there that one is easier to get to if you undo that one because it'll move so you can move this um hose out of the way a little bit it'll give you a little room so take the 12 out first and then the 17. all right i'm gonna go underneath and do some more stuff under there i think i forgot to mention i know that looks really like redneckish but <laughs> that's basically what you're supposed to do i end up having to take that shifter out i'll show you what i mean that shift apart there's your shifter. That's where your knob screws onto. That sticks in there. I was thinking about it, and I thought, wait a minute. When you're lowering that, that's gonna get in the way. Also, um, I needed to do this. When you take that, there's a remember I was talking about that rear bracket, that part of the frame bracket that holds the rear of the transmission up. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about there. I have when I take that out, you don't want the transmission just kind of hanging there off the engine. So this here, put a piece of wood through here. Put a towel here so it doesn't damage anything, which is under the thing anyway, but I'll make, you know, be sure. Put a towel here. Um, so, oh, by the way, there's three bolts holding that shifter thing on. You can pull it out, and then you can get, like, a turkey incubator. Take a towel, put it around it, make sure you don't get anything on it. Or there's some transmission fluid on in there. You can suck that out of there. I got a little bit out. I didn't get all of it out yet. Anyway, um, so I have this looped around the, the tailpipe of the transmission. That way, when I take that bracket off, the transmission doesn't just hang, like I said. Let me show you underneath what it looks like. Oh, okay. See? That's just holding that right where the dry shaft goes in. So that way, when I remove this bracket right here, it's not just hanging there. So what I'm probably going to do is I'll leave a couple bolts in here. I'll, I'll, I'll break them loose, but I'll leave them in there. And then, where when the time is right, when I have this bracket removed and it's hanging off the string here, or rope, not string, rope, also, use something, make sure, make sure you know it's gonna, don't use, like, real thin, something real thin. You wanna have, that'll support the weight. This is just some heavy duty rope right here, so that'll work. Anyway, oh, also, you can also use, like, a, one of those, um, ratchet straps, that'll work too. But anyway, when I take this off, I don't, like I said, I don't want it hanging there. And, um, and like, like I said, now I, I, I can have time to take those bolts out slowly, and I'll, I'll lower down, so. Alright, I'm gonna go break those loose, and let's get the transmission out of here. All right, I got a piece of that frame out now. Remember that was up here? There's one of the bolts. I went through there. This side was a little, a little weird. Hold on. I took out the the transmission side first, but I should do the way around. So there's the two holes there. Um, and there are all the they, they're three bolts that go through pretty far, pretty far. And then there is. That, that part there, that has to slide out from this thing. Hang on, let me get out of here. Ugh. Okay. So, this here, see these little things right here, they get on top. I pounded this out. What you do is you take the screw out, but then you leave a little few threads, and you take a hammer, you hit it, and it'll pop out. Um, or you try to leave this in there, you can do whatever you want. I did this way, so it worked for me. Just, it might be a little tough getting the side out. This is a differential side, so this is a little side. It's hard to get out. But I now have only three bolts in the transition right now. I took I took all the other ones out. Um, hold on. Wake up. Back under there. Oh. Oh, here's this uh, wire here. So you can make sure you take all these clips out. Oh, 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 oh. Make sure you take that ground out. 10 millimeter. You don't be hanging. You won't be ha hanging in the air. And... Okay, so here's why I put that rope up there now. See this? See that? That's just hanging on that rope. Yeah. 
then up there, and you see I take one on the bottom out. And I take there's two, two of them that have uh, nuts on each side. Take those out. All right, I got the transmission out. Well, with the help of two other people. <laughs> You're gonna need to get a buddy when you do this. So, we did. And someone, because when you go to push the transmission up, the engine will go up too. So you couldn't disconnect them because they would kind of bind together. Not, you know what I mean. So if you have a buddy come in here, push this, hold this side down. So hold the back side down while you push the transmission up and wiggle it out. And then what I did is I was underneath it on a creeper. Now slowly lowered it onto my chest. Then just be careful though. I mean, it, well, it's not roll heavy. It's about 80 pounds. So I mean, still be careful. And then um, I had on my chest and then kind of slowly put it to the side of me and then have somebody grab the tailpipe and I had the front and then we sat on the ground set it right there and I slid it out once I got out from underneath it so uh, there it is there's the clutch so now to get this off I take up all these bolts here and this will come off and uh Take this off, get the clutch disc out, and then take our flywheel off. Alright, there's the flywheel off just been machined. Look at that. Nice and shiny now. Now it's been machined. Oh, there's the old clutch disc, by the way. Pressure plate. This thing right here. The bearing that sticks in the flywheel right there. I guess it's called a pilot bearing, I think so. But that is like... I mean, it's so hard. Like, I could probably turn it with two hands. This thing is, like, shot. And then, I don't know if I showed you guys or not. The old um, throughout bearing. It is making a little bit of noise, so. It's probably a good time to replace this stuff. And there's the new one. A lot stiffer. I'll probably do it when I install. install. That bearing here, put the throw bearing in, and then go ahead and put the new clutch disc and um, pressure plate in. But make sure you use your this thing, your clutch alignment tool. That's important. All right, I got that installed. So what I used, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Duh. This is a. Uh, I think it's a 34 millimeter. Not 23. Oh, wait. Yeah. 34 millimeter. I took this end, put it down over here. Hammer. And just tap here, 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 here until it's seated into there. This is bigger than the diameter. You want to be hitting this outer rim right here, the metal rim. You won't be hitting this dust cover. Okay? You won't be hitting the outer rim. This here, as you see, slides right over it. So, like I said, don't hit this because you'll ruin the bearing. Don't hit the inside, just hit the outside. Also, machining your flywheel. Um, if you read the sheet that comes with it, it says here, flywheel must be replaced or machined as shown below. Oops, let me focus. Or warranty will be void. So, you must machine it, or else it's gonna void your warranty. So this is the stuff that comes with it. It should be, yeah, it's the grease stuff, so we're gonna take this, and stick it on that shaft right there. We got the flywheel back on, 19, 19 millimeter. And then, I hold use a pry bar to hold it. Right here, that's what I did. If you don't have an impact, which you shouldn't use an impact on this anyway, I torqued it to 72 foot pounds of kind of in the middle. Use my torque wrench, so that goes up so, to that. Now I'm gonna put the clutch on and make sure you use your clutch um, alignment tool. So. All right, got that clutch on there. Um, so what I did, and you know, we should do here, get your, get your clutch disc and your alignment tool. Once you get that in there, you take your, and that, you know, you make sure it's lined up and in there good. You take your uh, pressure plate, put that, and that'll slip right over this. Um, and that opening was um, bigger because when I when you tighten these up, it puts pressure on that clutch and those splines move in. So go ahead and, and stick a couple bolts in there. 
um, sick or no valuables, leave this in here until you're done torquing the bolts, and then you can pull it out. Leave it in here, and like I said, don't take it out until all the bolts are torqued to, I did 18 foot pounds. It's between, you can do any between 14 and 19. I did 18, it seems pretty good. So, um, anyway, and then torque them in a crisscross pattern. So when you tighten them down, tighten this one, tighten, you know what I mean? Do it a crisscross and then keep going around, tightening a little bit by little. That way they'll still apply pressure evenly and then torque them in the star pattern. So, and then once you're done, pull this out and then voila. All right, it's in, but you're gonna need to have some help doing this. Um, first of all, I ended up having to take that splash shield off. So there's just uh, some bolts holding that rod right there. Taking that nut right off that one. And there's two bolts on each side. Total of, there's a nut and two bolts, three on it. So you go ahead and take your splash shield off. And what I did, get yourself a piece of wood. You won't damage anything. Get right in the front of that, uh, Oil pan and jack the engine up so the back of it will go down. Okay, and then that way you can get in there. So now, as he is still sitting back a little ways, but um, and then go ahead and slide it in so you can have somebody maybe have somebody hold it. Me, might well do it by yourself, which might be kind of hard to do, but you're you're gonna have to take that splash shield off though. Um, you may not want to do that when you're taking it out too. I don't know, but. Your call. Um, anyway, and then go ahead. I got there's some bolts started here. There's one here, one here. I got one on top too. That's the main one holding it. So, all right, that's in there. That's good though. So, so now um, I got fish with those bolts in. Like I said, the torque for these, I want to say they are uh, like they were 55, 50, 55 around there. So, now we got these bolts in. Um, and start them all. So don't don't put one in it and put it all the way down. Run, run it all the way down yet. You, know, you want to get them all in there and then tighten them all kind of evenly. So all right, now we got the rest of these started and then uh, we'll tighten them down. So all right, sorry to give an update in a while, but uh, here's what's going on. So I work. I'll start over here. Work my way back. See what see what I did so far. I'm caught in something there. All right, so I got the slave cylinder in. Um, there's two 12 millimeters. Then make sure you get your bracket up here, right up there. And also your bracket for your wiring. Um, and then you hold down here for the uh, wire here. It says, I think it's a 10, yeah, it's 10 millimeter right there. Um, I got most of the bell housing bolts in, except those two, but you put those two in when we, uh, um, get the exhaust in there. Um, here's your speedo. Got that in there, 10 millimeter. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, the uh, brace. Um, I went and put that in there so the engine's not hanging. It's not just hanging off the engine. So, and that goes. Got those bolts in. And those down there. There's two down there. Um, drive shaft is in. I haven't got all the way hooked up yet though. I got two bolts in it, but I need to finish putting the bolts in that. Oops. So you see I got two in there. Um, what else? Is that all? I think there's more to that. Oh, the wiring up here. Let me see. Remember I, lined, remember I was lining those up? That's why I did that. That way I easy to put back together. The same thing for this side. That is it right there. Make sure you make marks on it. So you know which one to which. Um, what else? Oh, um, hold on. Phew! Ah. Anyway, <laughs> these you just snap in all the way along here. There's a lot of them, but you just snap it as you go down. And all the way up to there. Also, make sure you get your ground right there. That's a 10 millimeter too. And one more round up here. Right up there. That one there. Make sure you get that one too. It's either 10 or 12. I think it's 10. Uh, is that all? Make sure you don't forget to put transmission fluid in it before you uh, start driving around. <laughs> Your uh, fill screw is right. It was on the side somewhere. 
Uh, right there. Yeah. Alright, so here's what I got done so far. Um, I got all the bell housing bolts tightened down. Um, the transmission is filled. But before you fill it, make sure you or make sure you fill it before you put this pipe back in. Make it a lot easier. What I end up doing is I use a little bit of, of um, what was it? I put a little bit of fuel line, like this big. Um, you know, just to give an idea here. Well, I'll show you in a minute here. But I use that, and I and I use the hose to kind of transfer it from the bottle to the into the hole there. And what you do is you fill it until you. Until it stops, so it's like that's the fill line right there. I mean, because it don't have a disc stick on it, you fill it until it starts coming out. So you keep keep filling until it comes out, and then um, it took about I think it's one and a half quarts. You know, maybe a little less. Well, because I used almost a whole quart, and then I couldn't get because it was you know a little bit left in there, but I couldn't get it out. So I used that for the uh, oil and your shifter. You're gonna need to put some oil in there too. Not much. Oh, where's my? There's the uh, right up in here. So, of course, on top, of course, you fill on top and just fill up that little line. Um, but, uh, and then I had to use like a half, another half quart. So, you're gonna need like, you're gonna go ahead, go ahead and buy two quarts of it. Um, as far as the exhaust goes, I'm putting, and you should do this too. It's actually, if you ever want to take your exhaust down again anytime in the future, get yourself some uh, anti seize. This stuff will make things a lot easier in the future. So, if say, you ever want to take your exhaust down again for some reason or your, you know, Cadillac converter or something. And, and don't forget your bell housing bolts. Don't put those in. Make sure when you put the transmission in. I mean, you can just stick them in there, but make sure you get to take them back out to, uh, to put your, uh, exhaust on. So you're going to need to do that. See, there's two of them there. So remember, 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 remember the long, longer one goes on top, shorter one goes on the bottom. So, and then, uh, after that, we'll have to put the, uh, support thing underneath here where it goes. Right there, goes across the transition, or underneath the transition, to here. I got the O2 sensor back in, but I noticed when I got back in there, this whole piece of wire right here was exposed to that heat. But the exhaust is right there. So I went ahead and took some um, heat shield and put on this. You don't have to do this, but it just made me feel a little better. And also I put a zip tie right here to hold that. Just make sure it doesn't kind of get in the way of, you know what I mean, that we don't fry the wires. What's going off already? You don't have to do this, but I just felt better doing that. Not, you know, make sure that I don't fry the wires. And then um, when you put the OC sensor back in, when you're screwing it in there, you're going to twist the wire. So, so twist it a little bit. Un so you're going to, you know what I mean? Twist it to the left first. Get the wire kind of twisted up a little bit. And then turn it, then tighten it up. That way it'll be as straight as possible. I didn't get perfectly straight, but I got pretty close. It's a little bit twisted there, as you see, but it's pretty close. And it kind of makes the wires stay together, too, so it's all right. Anyway, all right, so I got the exhaust in. You see, I use my uh, NICs on that, all these, just in case. And this, also, like I said, if you ever need to get in here again, make things a lot easier. So let's put that on the threads. I got, I got it everywhere, but oh well. Um... <laughs> So all the exhaust is in, all the bolts are tightened up for the bell housing. Um, I guess, like I said, the only thing I have to do is just put that bracket across here, with two bolts, put the one on back here, and we'll be done. It's all back together, runs good, shifts good and everything, so. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them best I can, um, at least what I know. Um, and uh, if the video was helpful, please give it a like. And uh, if you want to see more of my videos in the future, please subscribe. And see you next time.